chapter 10, verse, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That's the word of God.
No, she's not. Sister Felicia Brown. Amen. Felicia Brown. She's going to bring our announcement. Amen. Let's give her a hand. She's going to bring our
y'all believe it that you can do the same thing again? My trip is saying, you did it before, you can do it again. So God has provided for you to be there on last year. And if you're intentional and go ahead and start making plans and preparations, we do believe that he'll do it again. So we do look forward to seeing you in Jacksonville, Florida for our 96 National Only Convocation. Making a complete video from beginning to end with no edits and no cuts, showing you guys my entire setup, everything, and I'm going to prove to you guys without a shadow of a doubt that I'm not cheating, okay? And for those of you guys that already believe me, this is not for you, and this is not for the haters either. This is for the people that genuinely don't know. This is for the people who genuinely think I'm cheating, okay? So don't tell me, oh, you don't have to do this, you don't have to prove nothing, blah, blah, blah. I actually do have to prove it, okay? Because I look at... I look at gaming like a sport. Whether you guys believe that or not, I don't care. There's levels to this shit, okay? Clearly there's levels because people think I'm cheating, okay? If there wasn't levels, then nobody would say, oh, you're hacking. So clearly there's levels. It's kind of like a sport, okay? And just like in sports, they get tested for drugs, blah, 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 okay? And um, this is kind of like a test. So I'm going to prove to you guys from beginning to end that I'm not cheating. Sorry, I just got a phone call. That I'm not cheating and I'm gonna show you guys everything. Okay, let's get started. Alright guys, here's my setup. So that's my gaming monitor. It's my chat monitor. I turn it over. It's my Discord YouTube monitor. I turn it over. We don't need them. Streaming PC turned off. We don't need it. I even unplugged it too. Gaming PC. This right here. USB. USB to USB C charger for my phone, that's how I transfer files, we don't need this, put that over there. Um, so here's my controller, plugged in directly into the PC.
as you can see my controller plugged in directly into the PC okay now PC as you can see there's nothing plugged in except for the controller on the front in the back we got my mouse my keyboard my Astro mix amp wire uh, Go XLR wire plugs into the Go XLR right over there and that's it we got the display port for my monitor Ethernet cable as you can see there's no no USB sticks no nothing no external bullshit it's the regular old PC now I'm gonna restart my PC and the first thing we're gonna launch is Call of Duty well my task manager first and then Call of Duty the reason I'm restarting it is so you guys don't think that I launched a program cheating program or whatever the hell they are just Call of Duty first thing and there's nothing below me no foot pedal no nothing it's my my charger uh, head USB-C Okay, so the first thing that's going to launch automatically is my Go XLR app. Just the audio device, that's all it is. Gonna minimize that because we need that. Let's turn this down. Um, task manager, real quick. Oh, well, before we do this, let's launch NVIDIA recording. I'm going to record my screen so you guys can see the task manager properly and you guys are also going to watch the game through that this is going to stay recording the whole way this is going to be basically the monitor cam we're going to put it on the side like this the, the camera that i'm holding is going to be untouched unedited it's going to be from beginning to finish uh, i turned on the nvidia recording so you guys can watch the video in high quality and you guys are going to have this monitor cam that i'm using on the side so task manager And I'm going to go through this a little quick, but you guys can pause and you guys can slow it down, do whatever you want with it. Okay. So I've restarted my PC so that you know that I didn't launch any program um, besides Go XLR, NVIDIA recording, and Call of Duty. I also showed you guys that there is nothing plugged in to the PC besides my mouse, my keyboard, my GoXLR, my mix amp. As you can see, this wire is pretty long. It goes all the way over there. And my controller. Okay, so monitors are both turned around all the way. Turned them the opposite direction, just so you don't say that I'm looking at another monitor. PC streaming PC is completely off. That's it. Let's get, let's get some games in. You guys are going to notice that I play the exact same way. I'm going to hit 90% of my shots. I'm going to hit 90% of my shots like I always do. I'm probably going to drop, I'm probably going to drop 15 to 25 kills. Just like I always do. I'm going to switch, switch to this, this I'm going to switch, switch to this, this mic, mic over here. So you guys can hear me properly. Alright guys, we're looking for 15 to 25 kills. And we're going to try to hit at least 95% of our shots. <clears throat> That's a normal day of Call of Duty for me right there. No warm-ups. Jumping right in.
Check your gear and weapons. We go soon. Now, although this is a pregame, although this is a pregame, I want you to pay attention to my to my aim here, okay? Notice how I barely miss any shots. Same way it's gonna be in the game, same way it's always been. Just an easy, easy snap, easy control of the, re of the recoil, and uh, yeah, man, let's see if we can drop a 25. I'm looking for at least, at least 15. If I don't drop 15, you guys can call me a cheater. All right, I'll agree with you guys. I'm cheating. If I don't drop 15, I'm cheating. Unfortunate, we only have one teammate, chat. I think we're gonna have to, uh... See if I can drop 10 kills. That's one teammate. Invitation to discipleship, as he bishop, Mother's God, remarks and benediction, amen, by none other than our diocese bishop, Melvin Scott. Amen. amen. I have enjoyed myself on tonight. Amen. I feel the fire is yet burning. My pilot is like to stay on. And I'm waiting to win the prayer around. Elder Scott 
went to Pastor Matthew Holmes Church in Apopka. And the Lord has really given him a vision to, to lead the people, not just in Apopka, but around Orange County and around our, our country. In 2010, General Prelate Bishop Lorenzo Moore appointed Ellis Scott overseer of the church. And then in February 2014, Ellis Scott was officially elevated as the Florida Diocese Bishop of HOGSIC. In this role, Bishop Scott is responsible for managing and enhancing the day to day operations and scopes guidance of 20 affiliated churches in Florida and serves as that on the executive leadership committee. Presently, Bishop Scott is leading an effort to expand the current church edifice, and construction has begun. And we expect that construction to be completed in the summer of 2014, 2024. Um, Bishop Scott is a man full of God's anointing and really a watchman for the souls and a powerful voice for the gospel. But he is also a powerful voice for his grandchildren who always ask for money, like me and my cousin in the back. <laughs> but um, it is good to have a, a leader in faith, but a leader in family. And I have that, we have that in Bishop Scott. So oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes, Thank God.
praise and some people that say that it was one thing you didn't know. But they say they got the instructions from God that man told me, he said, I am an apostle. I've been going to work for a long time. Ever since you were a boy. Yeah. And I, I didn't know. I know it's live too. I ain't gonna know where I've been up for the last since 1960. He said he was an apostle. You know. So he said God made him.
He don't care about money. Right. Whether he's going to do what's right. Now, I'm not telling y'all what Paul and John are saying. Right. I'm telling y'all what they're going to stop saying. You take a stand for God, you're going to do what's right. Amen. I don't care if somebody's watching you. Uh, they don't even know what you're doing. You're going to do the right thing. Amen. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is living in you. When the Holy Spirit is living in us, then we're going to make the right decision. And you let it stay activated. I mean, the Holy Spirit, you can have it in you and it's not activated. You won't do anything. But it needs to be activated, right? So I want the preachers in the house of God, saints of Christ, I want you to live up to your stamina. Do what is asking you. Now when you do what is asking you, I'm telling y'all, this is the other sky again. If I read it, Paul is young. But I'm telling y'all, you do what you are asked to do by your leaders. You obey them, respect them. You're, a, you're going to be blessed. Do y'all believe that? Yeah. You're going to be blessed. Yeah. But when you get to the point where you don't want to do what they say, you don't care about nothing they say, you get so grown. And then I'm, I'm just a grown zero. Might be. But you, are you holding hold it as we are? You know, you got to be holding us. Amen. So I want you to be blessed. I want all the pastors to be blessed. You know why I want you to be blessed? Because I'm blessed. And I want to tell you, I will not go around from the whole mouth. I will not go around. I serve a God that got everything. I serve a God that said the earth is the Lord and the foolish is their own. And I looked at I said, well, I'm part of the foolishness. And he said, I can have the desires of my heart. I have my people all the time. And say, like Matthew over the church, what are your desires? God will give you the desire of your heart. I didn't get him to come to Holy after I was old. I was very young. Right. And I had I could do anything like all everybody else, but I refused to serve to do that. And I served God. And when I served God, God brought me to where I'm at now. God. Right. I like to tell the story. I'm pretty sure I'm wild. I'm always in the top I like to tell the story. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I just can be obedient to God. Obedient to the Word of God. Obedient to our leaders, y'all. Blessed. I remember El Ali. He was the overseer of the state of Florida, same as a bishop. We didn't have a bishop there. But he was the overseer of the state of Florida. And when I came to Florida, God sent me to Florida. When I came to Florida, I stopped. I went to Short Street, Short Avenue, Old Church. Jerusalem, along with the pastor. And I started riding around with him. I love old folks. I think today people don't love old folks. They want you to get out of the way. All they want you to do is get out of the way. Get out of the way. They got young people that they can take over and know more than you do. You might. But I love all Because if we would be riding over the temple, well, Haven, B Land, and all the different places that he went, I would ride him at night with his old man. Yeah. He 
he will talk to me. All right, then. And I listened to him. And he told me something. He said, Yeah, I don't want you to be. We were sitting in the churchyard on Short Street. And a marking bird sit on the limb. He said, You see that marking bird there? I said, Yes, sir. He said, Now, why? That bird's going to you know, fly off. And he said, I want you to watch the limb. He said, When the bird fly off, the limb is still going to be shaking. He said, I had just the way there were some papers in the church. He said, hey, the, Holy, the Holy Ghost is gone. Not activated. He said, They're still shaking. They're still shaking. Because they know how to shake. He said, I don't want you to be like that. I don't know anything. I was 20 years, 20 years old, 21. He said, I want you. He talked to me. He said, I want you to stand still and see the salvation of God. I take it all that in, y'all. We talk to people today, they don't care us anymore. A lot of people don't care us anymore today. They, they, they want to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. But when you learn to obey, be obedient to those that have rules over you, nothing but a blessing for you. Nothing but a blessing. And you know, the words here, I've never seen a righteous or a Satan or see dead prayer. I, I, I took my children. I came from a family of 15. Now I'm giving you all my history. A family of 15. Eight boys, seven girls. And I would tell my boys, I say, they men, now they're still my boy. I say, I have never went to bed hard. Amen. Amen. There were always shelter with my dad. My dad always looked out for her. A lot of people can't say that to all My dad didn't even read or write. But he was smart. He wasn't book smart, but he was smart. He knew how to take care of his family. And I thank God for it. And today, we make good money today. That's right. And you got people that are struggling to take care of themselves. Let alone 15 children. I had seven kids. And they all were I'm taking care of them. I had a shelf over there all the time. Oh, amen. I had a pot of grits. <laughs> <laughs> see, a lot of times people think that the reason I'm saying this wrong is a lot of times people see me now. And I am blessed. I'm not the dark. I'm blessed spiritual finance in every aspect of my life. I'm blessed. Amen. I need help. I need help. But people see, see me now and they think that, you know, my dad had something and they think that I had a silver spoon. I had nothing. Oh, my children coming up. Yes. We didn't ask nobody for nothing. Oh. We moved in a house one time. All right. I didn't have money to turn the lights on, so I got to pay me, but I had to get out of the house when we were there. So we put our furniture in there a little bit we had, a mattress or something, and put it on the floor. Got a two bar of oil. Yes, it's about to be. I don't know if I mean that. And my wife would cook them grits. You'd have a refrigerator, margarine, and butter. We did it almost a week. Then I got paid off. Amen. I just threw on the water and all that stuff. See, people don't know that nobody knows.
know this about me, but I never came to the church and told them that. I never asked the church for that. But the Lord blessed me. I just want y'all to know that you see me now, you don't know where I came from. You don't know where I came from. I was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, going through all of that stuff. I could have went. I could have went back home. Huh? You see, the good part about it, I have a new home in Georgia. A lot of people don't know that. I feel it. A new home in Georgia. Marley home. I moved out there. My lovely wife. We came out here to ask you one for But I went back. My mom and dad had never lived in a nice house. The only thing they ever lived in was a shotgun bear house. You know, that, you know, in town there. Three rooms straight through. And so when I came down here, I came, got my wife in me, and then I told my mom and my dad, I lived there for a month in the house after I got it. I arrived there about three months. And I told my mom and dad, I they all moved in the house. They moved in the house, they had more to live. They never had a house. Bathroom, toilet, all this stuff in there, hot water, you know, everything. So that's why I, I think that's why God blessed me here. Because I, I gave up something. Some people don't want to give up nothing. And, and they live there until they die. They don't get the history of my family. Right and today God blessed me. Uh -huh. I'm blessed today. I'm not afraid to say it. You know, some people are scared to say they're blessed because they're scared they're going to ask them for something. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. That's what I've been doing all my life. I'm going to help you. Because I know where my help is. The house I live in now, it was a little two-bedroom house. I had paid a down payment on a modern a home, a new home they were building. And I went to Don Ashley. I had paid a down payment. I came back by the house for a minute and I saw the man working. I thought, I don't want to live out there. I didn't want to live over by the car. I went in and I asked him, will you rent the house to me? He said, no. He said, I'm in the church, you guys are selling. <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> this is my house up now. Well, I just got some money out of here. All the children are going to fuck my mother out. I said, I'm married. And so I went on back to my truck. I was driving a truck. I started walking back to my truck. Mr. Welton called me. He said, Wait a minute. He said, Come here. He said, I'll sell you this house. I said, Wait a minute. I said, Okay. How much you want for it? God working again. I'm trying to get y'all to see something. God working again. He said, I want $10,000 for this house. That's all I paid about. Now, about 17 rooms on that house. I'm taking that out of three months. And uh, he said, I want $10,000 for it. And you bring me $1,000. And I'm going to give you $1,000. You see God working? What he didn't know about, I already work. I ain't never been lazy. I was working in the college out there, and I was driving the truck every day. I was getting back off my room, going to the lens. I was working out there at a custody. I was making two hundred and ninety-nine dollars a month. I put every dime of it in the bank. But I didn't need it to live on. And I put that money in the bank. Now when Mr. Welton 
saying that to me, I said, yes, sir. He told me where you live at. I said, okay, I'll give me that. So I went and got, went to the bank, got a $1,000, $20 bill. The bank man said, what you doing, what you finna do with this car? I said, buy a house. He said, you don't need no money. You can buy any house you want. I said, no, I want not want that. I need a $1,000. I got a $1,000 over there. He gave me a receipt. He got all the paperwork done on the house over there. My payment was seven dollars a month. God 
brought me on out. Carried through the Red Sea. Joshua was there. And so he was reminding me that uh, people now most of the day is gone. Now Joshua had led them at this time. It's just my time now. But he was reminding them what God and what he was going to do. For me and I, I'm going to the Lord. That's why we got to make a decision, y'all. Who you going to serve? Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve the devil? Are you going to be holy, sanctified today? And the hell raise them up. Are you? So I'm telling you today, you got to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. When you feel with the Holy Ghost and, and the Spirit of God living on, then we have something to keep us. We have something to teach us. We have something to guide us. Not, and that Spirit of God living in you, and just, when the Spirit of God living on, we can't help but to be blessed on. We can't help but to be blessed. I never thought that I would retire from a college. Because I was a high school dropout. But I went back to school. Went to Mid Florida when I was going to Mid Florida. The college opened up. Met the people from there. And they hired me. I did 35 years. I, I never looked for a retirement. All I want to do is take care of my family. Right. That's all I want to do always. Take care of my family, not somebody else's family. Now, probably today, a lot of times people want to take care of somebody else's family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to take care of your family. That's what I thank God for. Joshua was to give me some instruction that I want to do tonight. Give me some instruction tonight. I'm trying to tell you tonight that you ought to love your family. Huh? You ought to teach, teach the Word of God to them first. Get saved, accept him as a person of saved. And then let them know that in my house is going to serve the Lord. My children will live in my house, they serve the Lord. They have no choice about uh, I ain't going to church tonight. You <laughs> can't talk to me like that. You tell me they ain't going to church tonight. I don't care. They come back here to live now. That's right. Gotta go to church. My house is going to church. Because I'm brought up in the church. But anyway, Joshua here was talking to the people there that he, he, he brought them out. I was telling them uh -huh. about, you know, you go serve the Lord. And I'm telling you today, we need to serve the Lord. Yeah. You need to serve God. You need to. Let God have first place in your life. Yeah. When God has first place in your life, you don't have to work. Yeah. And you got to be real, y'all. We got to be real in Christ Jesus. Yeah. We got to be real because the Lord brought us from a long way. Yeah. Huh? You got to be real in it. Yeah. And sometimes I want to say this to the preachers, or so many preachers are falling by the wayside. All right. I'm talking to the preachers tonight. All right. All right. So many preachers falling by the wayside, and they don't even know they're unfaithful. They don't know they're fair. They, they think that they're doing everything right and all this shit. But so many people falling by the wayside, preachers falling by the wayside. But you need to ask God to help you stand. Why? How do you fall? Because sometimes preachers get caught up in sin. Amen. Just as that the number does, all of them. I'm just talking preachers. I don't know why I'm talking about preachers. Just talking. Uh, uh, they get caught up in sin. I say, you know, sin. When you go out there and do that little sin, come on, come on. Hello, no more sins. Hello, one time sin. One time, I'm gonna do it one time. That gonna be it. But look here. Sin will right. take you yeah. further than you want to go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. Sin 
will cost you sin will, will cost you more yeah.
three times a day. And they plotted against him. I mean, I think y'all know preachers that people that plot against him.
next time we talk about Abraham, loud on him and bulls. He will represent God. He helped. Now, if he was in hell, now I'm in bed. Don't let my brother stop in this place. Don't let my brother stop. It's hot. Don't let my brother stop. It's hot. Don't let my brother stop. Ain't no water down there. All down there is one of the one drop of water. You have to swing on the tip of the water and let it drop a drop on my tomb because I'm being tormented in this place. Uh, yeah. Hell is real. Yeah. Hell is real. That's why we all we have to live this life that we ever can. We have to live this life that we make this transition to yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lazarus had a smooth transition. Oh, yeah. I think about my mother. My mother died in her sleep. And she had a smooth transition. You know what? Well, she was just smiling. My mother was smiling so when she died. My dad had the day two, two months. Uh -huh. So we said, well, pray the dad came back and then she was having a dream to him. And uh, they were having a good time. And she went on out there. I love it. Uh -huh. I love it because she made a smooth transition and that was it. Uh -huh. I thank God. Look. I just want to take a stand. Amen. I hope I say something tonight to help